Perfect. Hello everyone, welcome to the Connected to World DM broadcast. I am your very own Bishop Jerome A. Taylor. I pray that you're having the best morning of your life. Yes, this is 2022. Yes, we are in the new year. Can you believe we're already halfway through the month, people of God? Come on, hit the share button, everybody, because we got a, an amazing topic to talk about this morning. Of course, you all know that we're in the 22 things that you need to commit to in 2022. 22 things to commit to in 2022. Let's start out of the gate by hitting the share button because I have a lot of information to give you on this topic. Not all the 26 points. We're just going to be sharing some nuggets about this uh, third point that we're going to give you this morning. I hope you had a blessed weekend. I hope everything has been wonderful for you and your families. I want you to know that God is on your side. And yes, he is in fulfilling promises. Yes, he is into blessings and favor. Yes, he is going to do everything that he promised that he will pull off of you in the year of 2022. Remember that this is the year of the double-double. Yes, indeed. God will not deny you this year. You will not be denied. Might be delayed, but it won't be denied. And I'm prophesying, too, that the things that we're standing in need for will not only be delayed, but they're going to be suddenly, and, and su there's going to be a lot of suddens, suddenlies in our lives that God is going to deliver the, the blessings and the things that we've been standing in need of. You've heard the saying that you may be, it may be delayed, but we won't be denied. Well, I believe 2022 is going to be a year as my bishops and my archbishop Leonard Love and Bishop Carolyn Love have prophetically spoken over the body of Christ and also has allowed us to lock in uh, uh, as, as, as one of his sons, uh, uh, one of the sons of, the, of, of his ministry, amen, of the Pima. Uh, he, they have shared that this will be a year uh, that we will not be denied. I believe that. I believe we will not be denied of the things that we're standing and believing God for. But I also believe that there will not be a long delay. Amen. A long delay. Because some of us need our stuff like immediately. And we really do. Some of us need our blessings like suddenly uh, because of this, you know, the things that you've been needing to get done. Amen. So I don't believe it's going to be a long length of time that God is going to uh, uh, hold your blessings back, so to speak. I'm grateful for the things he's cutting out of our lives, the friendships and the people that don't really mean us any good. I think the people that's going to pull too much energy from us, take too much of our time up, those that really don't have our best interest at heart, he's moving those folks out of our way, uh, people like that, so that we, when we get our blessings, y'all, come on, everybody, hit the share button, that we won't lose it. We won't have time to be playing with folk that don't like us, playing with folk, blessing them and doing stuff for them, uh, 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 sharing our blessings with people don't, who do not have our best interest at heart. It's time out for that. We, we have to remind ourselves it's time uh, in this season of 2022 for God to surround us with successful relationships. People that love us, people that got our back, people that's going to share, people that's going to um, um, be, you know, have the same similar hearts that we do. You know, of course, everybody's different. We're all going to be different in our persona, 
But I mean, like, they, they really got your back. You got their back, they got your back. You know what I mean? It's this, it's this uh, reciprocal relationship, not this one way, where you're pouring into, pouring into, and they're not pouring back into you. Come on, everybody. Hit the share button. So I'm excited coming out the gate of this year of 2022. So look, this is what we're going to do. We get ready to get into the third point. So again, these are 22 things that you need to commit to in 2022. So but without belaboring the point, we're going to go ahead and jump into point number three. Thank you for rocking with us last week. I know I gave you 26 points. You stayed to the end. I appreciate that. But uh, we're not going to have 26 points this morning. This topic here, critical uh, for the life of the believer, you'll understand when we share the point. All right. Point number three. All right. So the, the, the 22 things to commit to in 2022 is praying the word daily. Yes, Lord. Praying the word of God daily. Yes, Lord. Praying the word of God. Man, this is something serious. Pray. Come on, people. We understand the power of prayer. There's nothing like prayer. I mean, when I tell you, uh, I get excited to think about the weapon. It is a weapon for the believer as well. But there's nothing like prayer. So point three, praying the word daily. The word. Not just your thoughts. Not something you're conjuring up in your mind. Come on. we're gonna. Uh, I got a bag that we're going to show you. Uh, I got a small bag with prayers in it. I might have left it, but uh, you can take it on that for me. Uh, I got a, I got a, I got a little uh, uh, bag with a lot of prayer books in it. So we're going to show you some of the things that we've used over the years. Our prayer, our, our church is on a, uh, 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 an annual prayer journal that that our church creates every year. So it's, it's quite exciting. But the the point three is, if you're going to commit this year, the things that one of the things that you need to to commit to in the year of 2022 is having a prayer life. All right. We need to have a prayer. Then we need to pray the word daily. When, see, that's something that I believe that uh, that sometimes we're going to get into this. Uh, and we've done uh, teachings on prayer. Prayer is so critical for the life of the believer because we, we, we've we learned over the years one of the simple definitions of prayer is prayer is communicating with God. That's a very simple definition. Um, but we're going to give you some other uh, thoughts to add to that. Prayer is communicating with God. All right. Prayer is a direct, it's a direct line to God. And so you got to remember this. If the believer is not praying, um, communicating with God, then we're not building a relationship with God. Then a lot of other things are happening as a result of you not praying. So prayer is the language, uh, prayer is the language of the kingdom. It's like, this is how we communicate our issues, our problems, our worries, our troubles to God. This is what we talk to God about all the things that's on our mind, heart, soul, uh, Without prayer, our walk with God becomes weak uh, as no communication takes place. You know, we can't build a relationship with God if we don't talk to him. Come on now. No more than you can have a relationship with a natural person if you don't communicate with him. Because the simple definition of prayer, prayer is communicating with God. And guess what? There's no greater or better or more significant person, right? This is paramount. I mean, this is like what we call him important, not important. This is him important. Amen. Some things are important to us. This is what we call H-I-M-P-O-R-T-A-N-T. This is important. The most important relationship that all of us can have is a relationship with the Heavenly Father, right? That goes back to point one. What we're going to do in, the, in 2022, uh, the 22 things, one of the, remember the, the point two weeks ago was we're going to know him, knowing him. So how do you know him? You know him by praying and talking to him every day. We're going to have uh, prayer times. A uh, uh, matter of fact, our, our church family is set up on three times a day where we pray. Praise God, which I think the Lord gave us that some years ago. So we pray out of three different books every day, three different prayers. Sometimes they're a little long. Maybe sometimes they're not. Most of the time they're not too long. So you can get through our prayer agenda probably less than 20 minutes, 30 minutes, which is not bad unless you're praying the 11 praise prayer. But look, how critical it is for you and I as a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ to have communication with the Heavenly Father. Now, I don't know about you. Again, he is the most important person that we need to know in our lives. So we got to take time, and this is how you know prayer is important. Uh, we have to make time and take time. Come on, say that word. We have to make time, and most of the time you have to take that time. It's like the devil fights us of uh, two things, to get into the Word, and also he fights us to pray the Word of God. Now, why, why is that important? Because, you know, we, we understand the Scripture talks about uh, how he exalts his word above all his name. And, uh, you know, so his is like God's word is more important to him than anything. So we have books that are some of our greatest 
uh, teachers in the body of Christ, some of the greatest, uh, you know, prophets and prophetess, uh, evangelists, uh, you know, fivefold ministry pastors, uh, you know, apostles have written books on prayer. And what they've done, they've taken the scriptures out of, out of the word of God and formed prayers with these scripture references, all right? Because God wants us to pray the word. He doesn't want us to pray the, talk about the problem. He wants us to pray the word. So, you know, of course, the, one of the beautiful things about prayer is that there's many uh, subjects, if you will, or many things that uh, ill, uh, uh, ill our lives. Uh, and there's, there's, there's times where, you know, whatever's Ill, Ill, Ill in your life, we have to understand this, that there's a prayer uh, design uh, for that situation. In other words, somebody's created, out of all these years, somebody has created a prayer specifically for your problem. And so what's beautiful about that, we don't have to waste a whole lifetime uh, praying and then when we say praying amiss, we well, are not praying the word of God because God only hastened to his word. The Bible says he hastened to his word. God is listening for you to give him his word back. And so you should not only be reading the word, but we got to be praying the word. You don't have to come up with this stuff yourself. It's, it's really easy. It's in a lot of books. Uh, that's all. We're going to show you some of the books before we get off the air that these men, great men and women of God have written uh, so that you can pray and be targeted when you're praying the word of God. Hit the share button, everybody. Why is this important? Because um, you want to know that your prayers are are making a difference and that God is hearing you. We know that God cannot ignore his word, people. When you pray, when you're praying that word, he cannot ignore his word. Glory to God. And he's not going to ignore his word. Amen. Uh, and, and then he's going to do some things while you're praying. And so we're going to go to a couple of scriptures to show you some things about uh, a, a prayer and how important it is and how God responds to that thing, man. I'm telling you. Uh, and so it's, it's very, very critical that you understand as a believer why you need to engage in it daily, amen? Not only do you need to read your word daily, you need to be praying every day. Again, if you have a problem, you don't know how to do it, uh, we, we got a, a simple manual. Uh, we, we Again, hit us up on the web there. Uh, our information will be at the bottom of the screen. We have a simple prayer guide, a whole guide, like every day, what to pray. Tomorrow, date, we have a prayer for that date and the three books that we pray out of. Very critical. Maybe we'll show that also on the screen, the three books that we are actually praying out of right now praise god because we want your life always in communication with the father amen we want you always talking to daddy amen he is the he is like i said the most uh important relationship on the planet and then you know my thing is you cannot build a relationship with someone you don't communicate with amen so so our prayers are designed for you to keep or to to develop a personal relationship with him what's so cool about this people god we have to learn as believers not to lean to the arm of flesh or have to get out of this thing where we have to see God. See, uh, uh, what's powerful about uh, praying, you know, some people got to believe to see it, but some people got to believe, some people got to see to believe, but some people believe to see. You know what I mean? It's like they don't need to see it, they just believe it, praise God. And it's almost like that experience we had with Didymus Thomas. Didymus Thomas had to stick his hand and, you know, stick his fingers in Jesus' hands and poke, you know, see if it was him because he didn't believe that you know, Jesus the Messiah had rose and, and, and come back to, to life to, to, uh, to be uh, fellowshipping amongst the disciples. And, and Didymus Thomas had a problem with belief. He said, Lord, please help my unbelief. I'm having a problem believing that you rose, you got crucified, and they beat you down the way they did. Now you talking about this is you? So, you know, so God said, no problem. I understand, Peter, because there are more, I mean, uh, Didymus Thomas, because there's a lot of people like you that's going to be in the world, and, and they're going to be doubting too. So go ahead and stick your hands in my hands. Stick your hands in the holes and all that stuff. And of course, you know, Thomas, like, well, he was real straight with him, like, Lord, I'm having a problem believing all this. And I'm telling you, when you start praying and talking to God, let me tell you something, people of God. When you develop a relationship with him, see, you're, you're, see, the Bible says all things are possible to them that believe. You're going to start believing this Bible a little bit better. You're going to start to, you know, when you get to know a person a little bit better by spending time with him, you know how it is, like you get to meet people, and the more time you spend with him, you get to know their character, you get to know their flaws or their indifferences or whatever the case may be. When you start spending time with God, praying, I mean, he's going to begin to show you stuff and begin to commune with you more, right? Uh, reveal things to you through the Word of God. Then you're going to feel more comfortable with him, all right? Comfortable meaning that you're going to have more confidence in him, in his ability. So when life storms hit us, when things arise in your life, hit the share button, everybody. You won't panic like the world because you will understand, I have a relationship with God, and I know what my daddy is able to do. As you're reading the Word, right? As you're reading the Word, impactful, because you're studying 
how he's done with his uh, how the patriarchs of old, how he responded to the Hebrews of, of the Bible, right? The Old Testament, New Testament, how he responded uh, to those that he called by name. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, how he handled his people as a king of kings, how he dealt with his children, how he dealt with his, his children's enemies. So you get to learn characteristics of him. But guess what? He's the same God. Amen. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. Hit the share button, everybody. Come on real quick, because you need to know how he feels about you. You need to know that God loves you with an everlasting life. It's not just cliche as something you pull out there. God really loves you. I mean, he loves you so much. And I always, God showed me this years ago. He said, son, I allowed you to have three children. I actually have four. Dr. T and I lost a baby at, uh, in the stillbirth. So um, he said, but I gave you those three girls because I really wanted you to have a, rela a revelation of how I felt about you. And this is what he told me one day. He said, now, son, he, he asked me uh, in my spirit, he said, what would you, would you, you know, kind of ask, him, what would you not do for them? Would you do this for them? Will you give them clothes? Will you give them, will you go to work and, pay, you know, uh, take care of them? Yes, Lord. We we do, I do anything for them, Lord. It's like, will you, will you, will you, will you stop somebody from hurting? Yes, Lord. And then he like gave me all these scenarios, set me up. Give me all these scenarios. I was like, man, God, I'm, I'm committed to my girl. I will hurt somebody. I will, I will work hard. I'll do what I got to take my family. He said, so if you being mere man feel that way about your three natural daughters. He said, now I created you. You my son. He said, now you feel that way about your girl. How do you think I feel about you? Man, that thing broke me down because now he said, you know, I gave you those daughters so that you can have a revelation of how I feel about you. You need to understand how I feel about you. You feel that way. You're a natural man. You got flaws. I'm God. I'm El Shed. I'm, I'm God Almighty. And so you got to understand how I love you to the to the to the tenth or to the hundredth power of how you love your girls. I couldn't even wrap my head around it. Hit the share button, everybody. Think about how much you love that baby. Think about how much you love your children. And think about God says, I love you a thousand times greater than that. But I'm just I allowed you to have your child so that you can feel or even sense how I feel about you. Man, let's get deep. But most of us know how we love our children. What we come on now. We come on hit the show button, everybody. You know how you really feel about those babies. So God said, I gave you those girls so that you can know so that you can understand how I feel about you. Man, I know God loves me. Amen. I know he loves you. Hit the share button, everybody. Why has that changed the game? Because I know that he going to look out for us. He's not going to let anything happen to us. You know, life going to happen. The devil going to be the devil. And I think he need to get his share fair of, 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 the, uh, of the blame. You know what I mean? When stuff happened in life, we need to give Satan his share. I know we're promoting that joker, but he needs to get his fair share of, of the blame. So we need to understand this about God. God loves us so much and uh, cares so much about us. And that's why I believe... Everything he's prophetically spoken through people, anything he keep reminding you about, he's going to pull it off because he's God. And I mean, who, who going to stop him from blessing this child? Who going to stop him from uh, favoring you or, or doing right by you? Amen. Who's going to stop him from just doing goodness by you? And, and you're talking to him every day and, and you're taking out time to have a relationship with him. You think he's not going to bless you, child of God? And you know how important this is for us to have communication with our heavenly father every day. Hit the share button, everybody. Yes, hit the share button because this prayer piece, man, praying daily the word is critical. Come on, shout amen. It is critical that we pray the word. Why? Because we want to be, we want to be targeted in praying and we don't want to waste time just babbling. Come on now. We want to make sure that our prayers are not just going up in the atmosphere and not hitting no targets. If you pray about something, you want to make sure that your prayers are, tar are targeted towards whatever the issue, whatever the issue at hand is. Come on now, we need our prayers hitting that bullseye. Come on, like you know, you you've seen targets. We got a bullseye, and the red dots, or the red rings, and the white the white rings, and all that stuff, or the white white uh, uh, cheese. Uh, we call it cheese uh, uh, the Marines cheese cloth, but the red rings around, and they call it bullseye. You get the darts or even arrows. You want to hit that thing on the mark. They say hitting the mark. You want to hit the thing center in the bullseye. Why? Because you want to be right in the will of God when you say your prayers. And so again. It's not complicated. There's books all on the market that, that has prayers uh, and scriptural references that somebody has, most of these men of God and women of God have designed. So it's not that complicated. One of my favorites is Prayer That Avail Much book. It's one of my classic books um, that we pray all the time. It may be another bad red uh, but it, it's just one of our classic books. I want to show you this because when I tell you uh, this is like, uh, it's like almost like one of, it's like the Bible for our church. Uh, one of the other Bibles that we use, and, it's, and I don't mind promoting, I'm not getting no credit or no money from this, but uh, I've been re recommending this uh, since my wife turned me on to this thing over 33, 34 years ago. 
uh, Jermaine Copeland, Prayers That Avail Much. This book here is a classic, an all go to for me. Uh, we do have a lot of other books that we pray out of, but this book here, when I tell you, it has every topic imaginable in here about everything, walking in humility to receive Jesus Christ, to receive in the of the Holy Ghost, uh, submitting all to God, receiving forgiveness. I mean, you know, uh, handling the day of trouble, calamity, uh, 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 break, healing from abuse, letting go of the past, renewing the mind, conquering the thought life. I mean, this goes on and on. Safety, uh, selling real estate, uh, court cases, prosperity, you maintaining good relations. It has so many prayers here, and it deals with a whole lot of pl a plethora of things. And so sometimes you need to know what you're dealing with, identify what you're dealing with, then get a book similar to this, because this has many various topics in it, and pray. Yes, pray the word, because this lady uh, and her team, her staff, Ms. Jermaine Copeland, they've done a wonderful job by compiling prayers that target, uh, again, scriptural references that targets and hit the, hit the thing on the bullseye, all right? So that when you're praying, this is my point, you're getting results. I don't want us wasting time not praying the word of God, because if you're not praying the word of God, you may not be getting the results. And you don't want to get frustrated as a believer thinking that God don't hear you. So we have to understand, watch this, by spending time with God, you know he wants his word back, right? He says, uh, 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 hasten, see, I hasten after my word, right? That's a scripture reference. So we know that God says, I, I, I move immediately when I hear my word prayed or when I hear my word confessed. I move quickly on it because there's nothing more powerful than the word. The devil can't stand in your way. That's why when Jesus was in the wilderness and the Bible says, uh, he said to uh, Satan, he quoted three scripture references on that rascal, right? A uh, man should not live by bread alone, but, but, I, but, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Every time the devil would come to him, he didn't, he didn't um, you know, uh, cry or he didn't go into a hole. He ran from the devil. He did not run from the devil. He quoted the scripture reference. You got it? And when he quoted the scripture reference, the devil what? Backed up from him because the devil does not want you, first of all, knowing the word. Amen? And Jesus shot the word at that rascal three times. So the devil will come at us, but we got to know how to pray the word. We got to know how to read. First of all, we do most of us read, or most of us are too lazy to read, but most of us got to start reading every day. Again, we got a, 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 a daily reading a, a daily reading agenda as well about the Bible, and then we have a daily prayer agenda. So we got to be reading that word every day and praying that word every day, amen, making sure that we are praying the word. Why? Because this is one of the keys to our success. We're praying the word. We're talking to God, right? We're, we're, it's a powerful thing. A couple of things happen. We're actually having communication with him, and we're also getting solutions in the earth. See, prayers, he gave it to me like this uh, years ago, a definition he gave me. He said, prayer is a supernatural tool given to, the hands of the, given to the hands of the believer to tap into the supernatural power of God that, res, that, that yields results in the earth, all right? It's a supernatural tool. It's a tool that God gives to the believer. He said, I'm going to give you a tool called prayer. And what I want you to do is praying the word. And what it's going to do is going to tap into the supernatural power of God. And also it's going gonna, it's gonna to cause results in the earth realm. We want results in everything you do. When you pray about your child, you pray about money, you pray about a healing, you pray about somebody bothering you, bullying you on the job, somebody harassing you on the job, somebody doing you wrong in the community. You know, you're praying for auntie or uncle that God would restore their relationship, restore their marriage. I don't know, praying for somebody to get off drugs or quit smoking cigarettes, praying that somebody will ask for forgiveness, come back and reconcile a relationship. Whatever you're praying about, child, there's so many things that, right, that happen in our lives that we need to talk to God about. And sometimes, let me share, the Lord showed me this this morning. He said, some of you put too much of your stuff on Facebook. Some of you put too much of your information on Instagram. And some of you talk to the wrong people about your problems. And then you wonder why the world, you know, again, Facebook friends and all those people are wonderful. I know I love Facebook. Thank God for all my Facebook friends. But most of the time, you know what I mean, if in the natural somebody following you, in the natural, you think it's creepy, right? Somebody constantly following you. And uh, in the natural, like everywhere you go, they right there. You think that's a pretty creep show, right? But sometimes we want so many followers, and it's about the same difference, you know what I mean? But we accept followers on one hand, but at the same time, the natural is a creepy show because you don't want nobody following you. You want your own privacy in life and kind of doing your own thing. But my point is, you can't be that desperate for people to follow you in this life that you'll share your information with all the world. Some people just don't need to know your business, you know? And then some of you put too much stuff out there when you're going through problems because, again, people don't want to know. Uh, they want to know your problems just to know them to help you. People want to know your problems so they can talk about you, right? And they can just, you know, be a part of the laughing stock to see you going down. Hit the share button, everybody. And some of you just so so just undisciplined to talk about 
all your problems on Facebook, all your problems on Instagram. You know, it's like T, too much, inf too much, what's it called? TMO, too much information, T TMI, TMI. So some of you do too much information. Some of you share too many things because you got diarrhea at the mouth. You don't want to hold your course and talk to God. And he's the most important person to talk to. And then by the time we talk to everybody else, again, they're going to keep talking about it and they're not talking about it. About, well, I ain't trying to cause no problems. I ain't trying to be nosy or trying to, no, they, you know, they, they, they want somebody else to know. They, you know, again, some of you just need to be quiet. Just keep your mouth closed and talk to God who can really do something about your problem. Come on, everybody, hit the share button. God is the only one, is one of the only persons I know that when you talk to him about your problems, it ain't going nowhere. He's the only person I know that when you talk to him, he can do something immediately about it. He's the only person I know that really wants to come in and eradicate your whole life so that you can be joyful and keep that joy uh, until it overflows. He wants you to, to the spills, till it overflows. He really wants to see you doing well in this life. Some other people may talk about you doing well, but God really wants to see you doing well. So now you have to be selective in who you tell your problems to. Again, we need to talk to God about everything. You know, take Take to you know, owe him. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Talk to God about everything. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Let me talk to God because by the time I talk to humans, my stuff on Facebook, I'm on TikTok, I'm on Instagram. Praise God. I, 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 I'm I'm mad now because I trusted somebody with the information, and the only thing they want to do was to laugh at you. Come on, to 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 make a make a laughing stock out of you, and and to see you really go down. That's not a real friend. Come on now, a real friend will will pray with you. Really will pray take this thing to God in prayer, but some of us got, some of us don't have those kind of friendships. We got people, again, that, like Facebook says, friends, follows, and all that, or friends, to, you know, when you accept somebody as a friend, these people are not truly, some of you don't even know the folk you accept as a friend. It's just kind of the, the, it's kind of the fad of what you do on Facebook. But let me tell you something. There is people in your life that God's raising up. The scripture says that he'll call this friend to stick closer than their brother. Don't feel some kind of way that you got strangers that treat you better than your brothers and sisters that, that, that you came out of the same womb with. Hey Amen. Don't feel bad about that because I'm learning blood is thicker than water. The body of Christ's blood, that covenant blood is thicker than water. Your mama had the water birth. That's what we call the water. Amen. But we can't, the blood connection through Christ. So blood is thicker than water. So some of you going to have better relationship with your brothers and sisters than you do with your own natural family. It is what it is. Praise God. Jesus had a problem with his mom and and not, they had not, he had a problem with them. I believe they had a problem with him. You know, Jesus had conducting the whole revival, and then his brothers and sisters outside, where they should have been inside, right, catching some of that word, and then they come to the door to my, you know, but well, tell Jesus, his mama, and his brother outside. And Jesus like, y'all interrupt me for this foolishness? You know what I mean? Like he rebuked the people that say, hey, hey, Jesus, uh, your mom and your brother outside, he's like, y'all y'all really, y'all really interrupted me for this foolishness. Then he began to say, who is my mother, my father? Who is my brother, my sister, but those that do the will of my father? They begin to break that thing down like, look, I, ain't, I love Mary, but I got to do God's will. And Mary should have been in here. My brother should have been in here, but the outside trying to pull rank or whatever the case may be. But again, you got to understand, he knew his father. He knew the, the mission of the father, the heartbeat of the father. That the father, even though Mary had him, he had to be on a mission, preaching that gospel inside, not concerned about what even what his natural mama thought about him, even what his natural brother thought about him. He kept going and explaining that thing. Who is my mother, my father? Those that do well, my, and I know some of you have wrestled with your parents, all right? Some of you have wrestled with your parents to become a part of another church, to do something different, or to move away from the home church, and your parents have fought you on it. But thanks be unto God that you have obeyed God. What's important is that you obey God. God is the most important you need to obey, all right? He's the most important person that you and I need to obey. Hit the share button, everybody. We got to obey God on every, tar on every turn, on every task, and everything that we do. We got to obey him. He is the one that we got to, again, have that relationship with where it means everything. We put everything on the line for him. He's not going to fail us. He's not going to let you go. He's not going to down you. He's not going to cast you away. Amen? So you got to understand, prayer is critical for the life of the believer. It's all right? So look, at the bottom of your screen is methods and ways you can give. Kudos to my sons and daughters that are giving online. Thank you all for being uh, great people of God by sending your tithes and offers and gifts of love into the church. Thank you all for being uh, uh, not fraudulent, but thank you for being relevant and, not, and, and being credible. Amen. I appreciate that, that you're still tithing, you're doing, doing right by the Lord. That's a beautiful thing because God can trust you. Amen. When a man or woman stands up integrity, even though the church down, and you're sending stuff because the bishop doesn't have to be over your head, doesn't have to be reminded you in five minutes, pay your tithe, but you're doing it because you love the Lord. 
You're doing it because God has been good to you. Understand that tenth part belongs to God. And an offer, however you need to direct that offer, whether you direct it towards some category in the church or whether you direct it towards your bishop. Amen. We appreciate you. We do. And thank you again. I know that God's going to bless you a thousandfold in return. He's going to do amazing things in your life because he promised to open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you would have room enough to receive it. So God's going to do his part. He's always on the on the uh, side of doing right by you and I, even if we don't be faithful to God. You know what? A lot of times we've learned this, that sometimes we're not as faithful to him. Many times we're not as faithful to him as he is to us. And man, he's always, he's always, he, he, one of his name is faithful. Praise God. He's going to be faithful. And regardless of how much we fail him, how much we disappoint him, he always going to be faithful to us. So I want you to type, give a, give a good offer, man. You always just know that God's going to keep opening up the windows of heaven, pull you out of blessing. I know that some of you are trying to get out of debt. I speak uh, debt freedom in your life. I speak the, those credit cards and uh, furniture bills and home mortgages, uh, car notes, all that's paid off in the name of Jesus, uh, student loans paid off in the name of Jesus, hospital bills paid off in the name of Jesus. I speak prophetically over your wealth, anything holding up wealth that's got to get to your family. It comes now from the four cardinals from the north, south, east, and west. I command the devil to take his hands off your resources and your money in the name of Jesus. I thank God that you all are sores. He said he gives seed to the sore, and you are one who loves to sow. So I speak that over your lives, and I speak that you won't lose it. Praise God that God will begin to cause your savings even to grow uh, beyond anything you've seen this year. I thank God that money will be attracted to you, again, from the four cardinals, that you'll just have people sowing into your life. Things will have a breakout and a breakthrough that money just come from your business, from un unexpected sources, uh, lawsuits, everything. It'll just be coming, right? Because that's what God's going to do for you. He's getting ready to make you wealthy. Amen. He said he, he's raising up the wealthy. Why? So they can transfer that money over to you. So I'm thanking God, Father, let the wicked get ready to transfer that money, wealth transfer to your people in the name of Jesus. Because you promised us, Father, you said the wealth of the wicked was laid up for the just. We're the just. We're waiting on our wealth. We command the wicked to give it up. They land it up. They ain't spending it up. They land it up. Father, let it be transferred now, supernaturally to our accounts. Come on, supernaturally to our hands. Let properties, homes, and everything fall into our hands, even businesses that people run. Let us be the new CEOs, some of the ones, the new owners. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for that being done. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, let's look at a scripture reference because my time is moving really quick, and I want to give you some, uh, some other thoughts about prayer. Not so much a lot of points as we did last week, but just something to chew on because you need to understand as a believer that this is like you cannot be playing with this piece right here. You know what I'm saying? It's like prayer is our attempt to communicate with God through worship, confession, and petition. And, and, and the purpose of prayer is through, is through intentional communication with God, right? To get to know him while we're worshiping him. We're asking him to act in response to our requests, things that are going on the earth, right? You will notice that, um, that you know, uh, God, God doesn't require for us to do a lot of rituals, uh, and, and it's not, I mean, you know, some people do rituals, but God has made this thing so simple. He used Jesus as an example, how Jesus got up early in the morning, came to pray. You know, got away, stole away before the disciples got up, went to pray, talked to God. And I'm learning this too, people of God. Hit the share button, everybody. By the time you go into prayer for 30 minutes, 20 minutes, 15 minutes, man, let me tell you something. You spend that time in prayer, by the time you come out here, that's why Jesus, when he came out of prayer, because he went early in the morning to spend time in prayer, right? By the time he got his day going with the disciples, he didn't take long to cast out devils. It didn't take long for him to perform signs, wonders, and miracles. It didn't take long for him to do things because he had already put the time in. Glory be to God. The greatness of him came out and it was, was shown in, uh, amongst the people because he put that time in. You got it? He put that time in early in the morning when nobody could see him. Got it? Spending time with the Father, talking to El Shaddai, talking to Daddy, getting instructions. And then when he come out, right, the community... With the, with the main, the blind, the ill, he was casting out devils and doing stuff so quick because, again, that time in prayer invested caused the power of God to come on him. I don't know about you. I don't want to work hard in the natural. I don't want to come out here because God told me to come, but I don't want to be wrestling around on the, on the ground with no devil. If God, you know, tells me to cast him out, I point my finger and we confess the word over him, that devil got to come out. Or if I'm uh, 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 at, at, a, at a place where somebody needs prayer, I'm praying for them right now, even as I'm praying, the blessing is shifting their way. I'm talking about, I don't want to spend, I don't want to struggle trying to let people see the will of God or the power of God. I want them to see signs and wonders. Not to say it was Jerome, 
but I need a Bishop Taylor to spend time with God so that God can trust me, come on, and trust my life to, uh, to work through me to do signs and wonders. Amen? So you got to spend time with him. You can't brush over this point. You can't move over this thing so quickly. We have to spend time with the Heavenly Father. All right? So uh, I want to share something with you again in the Scripture because we've been talking a lot, and I haven't given you not one Scripture yet. That we had to turn to, all right? So we're going to go to Isaiah. Uh, let's look at this really quick. because I, I love this. one of the most uh, favorite scriptures in the Bible. All right? I want to share this with you really quick. I don't want to bore you, but I want, I want to share this with you because it's just powerful. Praise God. All right, let's look at this. Isaiah. There's Isaiah. Isaiah 33 is one of my one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. Amen? And um, uh, Isaiah 33. Let's look at 33. All uh, right, should be right over there, chapter 33. And um, and let's look at verse number, uh, yes, yes, yes. Let's look at verse number uh, six. And uh, this is powerful, man, this is powerful. This is one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. It says, verse six, uh, uh, verse five says, The Lord is exalted, and for and for he, and, and, uh, is exalted, for he dwelleth on high, uh, he hath, Filled Zion with judgment and righteousness. The wisdom and knowledge, uh, wisdom and knowledge, shall be the stability of thy times, and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is their strength. I love this. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy time. Right, uh, of, of times and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his strength. How do you begin to fear the Lord, or how do you begin to understand when scripture says stuff like this this is all about spending time with the people of God in prayer understanding that uh, verse 6 says wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times it's like God says if you're going to have stability right if you're going to have some 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 rocky uh, a good rock foundation in your life you have to understand that wisdom and knowledge cries out for this but but it shall be the stability of your times the reason you're going to stand right watch this people of God in times of a pandemic if times this this uh, a, a, a virus mutating and all that is because of your relationship with God. How do you build a relationship with God? You spend time in prayer. Praise God. That thing becomes solid and strong. You get to know Him just like you know your wife or husband or a good friend. Amen. He wants to make your relationship with Him that tight. Glory to God. So that nothing can penetrate you, nothing can discourage you, nothing can cause you to walk away from His kingdom, nothing can cause you, Amen, to want to give up on the, the things that He's promised you. Nothing will want to make you throw in the towel for all the things that, that, that has not come to pass yet, but it's going to happen in the name of Jesus because you're willing. Amen. You have a willing heart. You have, a, you have an ability to stand even though things may look like they're going, uh, let's say, topsy-turvy. You're just going to stand there to see the salvation of the Lord. You're going to stand there and pray that word every day regardless of how you feel. You're going to stand in that posture and begin to pray that word every day knowing that that word, come on, it's going to go out and it's going to accomplish everything that he sent it out to do. You're not going to get discouraged. You're going to be encouraged because you know the word works. Praise God. And you just keep pounding every day in prayer. You talk to God every day about the things that regard your life. And watch God check off, come on, each one, one by one. I mean, just doing it for you because he loves you. Come on, everybody, hit the share button. He's not joking with us. He's not playing with us. Amen. He is really sincere about our future. Amen. He is really sincere about our growth and about the things that concern our lives. Hit the share button, everybody. Come on, I'm excited about this thing. I'm excited because, again, he gives us this tool called prayer, and it says, I want you to talk to me every day. I'm going to hear you. It's a beautiful thing when God listens to you, right? And I'm going to bless you with the petition that you ask. I'm going to grant you the petition that you ask. I'm, I'm going to bless you because you're taking out time to talk to me every day. You're taking out time to make sure that I'm a, you know what I mean? You're just doing what you need to do as a believer, and not so much mechanically, you just know how important this is to God, to take out time to talk to him daily. Praise God. It needs to happen in the name of Jesus. Hit the share button. Every day of your life, you need to take out time to talk to G-O-D. That's important. You need to talk to God. Come on, everybody. We need to talk to God and tell him about all our woes, about the folk that's bothering us, about what ain't happened, what is happening, even though he know he wants you to come and commune with him. Come on now, my wife. When she was living, she couldn't read my mind. You know, we were going to build a great relationship, people of God. We had to open our mouths and talk. 
That's right, you have to open your mouth and talk. If you're gonna build a great relationship in the natural, you have to open your mouth and talk to your, your significant other. You can't have a great relationship without communication. Communication is like the blood of the body, right? So with this being said in, in, uh, about uh, the, the, the uh, prayer piece, prayer is communicating with God, not with man, God. So how important is that? We do a whole lot of talking as humans, we surely do, but some of us are communicating with the wrong people. Some of you are talking to the wrong folk. Get away from people who got your problems. Hook up with people who got your solutions. We need to talk to people who can help us to get to the next level in our prayer life, our, our word life, who's going to keep you accountable. Come on, uh, physically, mentally, whatever the case may be. You need to hook up with folk like that. You need to pray that God will lead people into your life that's going to help propel your life into the will of God to make you better. You see, every time the word is preached here at the church, we should have one letter difference in our lives. Better and bitter. It's two letter difference, E and I. When that word is preached, our lives need to get better. Yes, it hurts sometimes. Yes, it crunches on your toes. Yes, you may not like everything the bishop said, but it's like, man, he was telling the truth. If I get past this moment, I'm going to be all right. Let the word of God do the stuff in your life that needs to be done. But most importantly, we need to be praying that word every day so that God can grant us and give us the desires of our heart. You don't have time to be conjuring up prayers in your mind and not and just, just, just call out anything. But God is honorable like that too. But we need to make sure we're praying the word of God. Amen. Hit the share button, everybody. Let's go to another scripture reference. And we're going to try to uh, make this, uh, make it do what it do. But I want to show you something too because God is a very intentional God. And then he, he actually loves uh, the prayers of his people. He do. He loves he love his people praying to him. And... Um, it's just a powerful thing because uh, I want to show you this. This is really good. Uh, uh, let's do this here. Let's go to uh, let's go to uh, let's go to a good one here. Let's go to over here at uh, Luke. Let's go over here or Matthew. Let's go to Matthew chapter six uh, and let's look at verse number five. All right, Matthew chapter six and verse number five. Let's look at this really really quick. Praise God. Come on, hit the share button, everybody. I hope you're getting something out of this. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to move in a way where, again, you don't only got one shot at these lessons every week. So I don't want to be sloppy up here. I want to make sure I'm doing a, a decent enough job so that you're making notes, taking notes, and that you can understand uh, this piece about prayer. Amen? How In 2022, I got to become a personal prayer. I can't even pray, but I can't play with it. I got to be more prayed up than anything. Amen? This 2022, I got to be more prayed up than anything else in this world. When we say pray it up, that means that I got to develop a prayer life with the Lord. Some of you don't have a prayer life with the Lord. You just get up and kind of go during your day. Some of you are great readers, but you're still poor prayers. You got to have reading uh, ability and the, and the ability to pray to God. Come on, everybody. Hit the share button. Matthew chapter 6. And let's look at verse number 5. Uh, Matthew chapter 6. And let's look at verse number 5. Praise God. Amen. Matthew chapter 6, verse 1. It says, Take heed that you do not... Uh, do uh, not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward for your Father which is in heaven. Verse 2 says, Therefore, when thou doest uh, thine alms, uh, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Verse 3 says, But when thou doest alms, let not the left hand know what the right hand doeth. Verse 4, uh, That thine alms may be in secret, and thy father, which is in secret, seeth in secret, himself shall reward openly. Verse 5, all right, here we go. And when thou prayest, then thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they, are, they love to pray standing in the synagogue and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. We're not doing it to be seen of men, right? Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, uh, enter into the closet, right? And when thou shut the door, behind, uh, uh, shut the door, uh, to thy father which is in heaven and in secret and the father uh, to the father which is in secret and the father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly but when you pray use not vain repetitions alright that's another story we'll probably have to teach on that one day about vain repetitions see what I'm saying some people say well some people don't believe you should pray the same thing twice that's not what he's saying he's saying I don't have a problem with repetition but if it's vain and I mean when it's probably vain it means that you ain't use no scripture reference you know what I mean you're praying vain prayers by not using the word. Who has time, who have time to be talking about God about a, a real life issue and you ain't use no scripture in that prayer? 
You, you talk, it's vanity. It's like, it's wasteful. Amen. And so here it says, but when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Mm. That's powerful, right? So God said, I'd rather you speak the word two minutes than be sitting up in prayer for 20. And you ain't saying nothing. Amen. Come on, everybody. I'd rather you pray two minutes of the word instead of babbling 20 minutes and ain't saying nothing. Come on, everybody. You, you've heard them long prayers, and it sounds good. You understand? Well, Lord, uh, uh, we, we come before thee. There's no other help than we know. You know those prayers that just got rhythmic, especially in the black churches, a.k.a. the black churches. Amen? Boy, some folk can pray. You hear me? I mean, they can put it down. But how much was that prayer word base? Oh, God. And so now you're just wasting time because when you're, when you're not praying the word of God, people of God, you're not hitting the target. And again, you just got prayers just going all over the atmosphere and ain't hitting no targets. The stuff you're talking to God about ain't producing nothing. Praise God. Amen. You need your prayers targeted to produce results. When you pray, mm, your prayers need to have results to hit the target so that you can get the results or get the petition that you put before the Lord. Let's keep going here. I don't want to belay, I don't want to belabor the point, but let's keep going here because it's good. All right. So verse number um, seven says, but when you pray, use not vain repetition, Jesus, as, as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Verse eight says, but be, but be ye not therefore like unto them, for your father know what things you have need of before you ask. After this manner, therefore, you pray, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Powerful stuff, right? So we understand the scripture that God desires for us to speak to him. You know, it's like that whole piece right there is powerful because it's like it's a breakdown where he's saying, first of all, pray to the Father. That's where some of our problems are. Some of us talk too much about problems, like I said, on Facebook, Instagram, all that stuff. We need to be talking to the Father, all right? So this thing says, we understand through that scripture right there, what I just read, right? The Our Father prayer. We understand that God wants us to speak to him. He wants us to communicate with him. And he and this communication is called prayer again, all right? But there, there are a few strategic things to understand about prayer before you enter into it. If you don't understand these things, it's entirely uh, uh, probable that you will not you'll be wasting your time. And that's what we don't want you to do because who wants to say that, you know, I pray a lot, but my prayer is not being answered. That will frustrate you, and I think it will cause you to have some doubt about who God is, all right? So one of the things that it talked about, pray to the Father. Pray to the Father. We need you praying to the Father. So I've heard, uh, uh, you know, of course I've heard many, many sermons throughout the years, and and and, and they tell, and, and, and throughout the years, I've heard many prayers, prayer prayer. prayer I've heard many prayers as well. But one of the things uh, I, I've, I've, I've heard very few of is to explain how to speak and to communicate with God in secret. How do you talk to God in secret? How do you communicate with him in secret? If someone knows that you want to speak to them, uh, if, you, if you knew, let's say this point, if someone you wanted to speak to dwelt in secret, would you have a few secrets all right, yourself if you wanted to go to their house to speak to them? All right? I hope this makes sense. If someone you wanted to speak to dwelt in secret, you would have to have a, to know a few secrets if you wanted to go to their house or speak to them. These secrets, if you will, call uh, can mean the difference between having your prayers answered and not having your prayers answered. All right? So here's my, here's my point. This is important to understand when you need a miracle in your life. This is a, a significant to grasp if your situation is, is such as you need something that only God can give you. So God says, I want you to come to me in secret. And this is powerful, right? Because this is the part where was most of you don't, most of you, again, gets me. Because some of you come to church, right? When we physically was in church, some of you come to church and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Y'all know what we call it praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in tongues, and you all out loud, and you want people to know that you got tongues, that's fine. You know what I mean? But some of us won't go in our home. Because see, my, my thing, God said, I don't need everybody to know you praying. I mean, just come in, just kind of close the door, go into a spot, and we pray. You know what I mean? Just, just, just do it in secret because, again, he said, if you do it in secretly, I'm reward you openly. 
But if you're doing it for a showcase, you ain't getting nothing. If you're doing this thing to show off, if you're doing it to make people think you deep and all that stuff, if you're doing it, I mean, you got to be very careful because some of us will come to church and publicly speak, publicly pray, but it's like you're doing it for show, for people to see how eloquent your words are, how you can rip, you know, some people can, can, can almost pray like they're singing. Y'all have heard it, right? It's almost like they're singing a song or something. And all that stuff is for show because you ain't really mean nothing from your heart. It just sounds good and you got a nice voice. And people say, oh, my God, that prayer was amazing. No, you, you know, you have a nice voice and it sounds good and it's just articulation and all that. It means nothing if you're not sincere with it, especially if you're not praying the word of God. All right. So the importance to, to understand is that you need, a, a, like, a, let me go back to this. So let's talk about, let's talk about real quickly uh, the, the, the secrets, right? These secrets. Verse 5 says this. It says, and when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites, actor, pretender, are for they love to pray standing in the synagogues in the corners of the streets that they may have that they may be seen of men. You don't want to you don't want to pray to be seen. You want to pray to be heard. Come on, everybody. You you don't want to pray to God to be seen. You want to pray to Him to be heard. Praise God. All right. So very I said to, to you, they have their reward. So verse five teaches us that a pretender or a hypocrite prayers are never heard. A hypocrite and a and somebody. Watch this, hypocrite and pretender, you just praying stuff and, and just making up stuff, God, ain't, ain't, he's not even hearing your prayers, all right? So, so just because you're talking doesn't mean God is listening. Mm, Jesus. He's not interested in causing you to, to appear spiritual, indeed, you're, and when you're not. And some people are more interested in having other people hear them pray than they are God actually hearing their prayers. Lord have mercy. Here's another secret, verse 7. It says, he also teaches us that when a person uses vain repetitions, they will not be heard, uh, they, they, uh, uh, they will not be heard no matter how many times they say the, the same thing over and over and over, right? So, so two things here, don't pretend, number one, and don't have a, a, a memorized prayer that you say over and over, and especially when it's not scriptural. Let's say this, we uh, say something like this. Some of you, some of you sing like unscriptural songs. I'm not being funny. I promise you, I'm not trying to uh, cast no doubt in nobody's mind. Hit the share button, everybody. Let's say this for an example. This was one. This was my dad's favorite song. It is what it is, right? I learned that through him. He's played a lot. When he's here, he turned it up on the radio. But Sunday morning, I had a. I lived in a house where the, st the station used to used to serve salt water and fresh water. Sunday morning, at a certain time, they played the gospels. By, by the evening time, it's back to the boogaloo. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Same station, play the gospel stuff, hear all the sermons of the pastor throughout that day, a certain time when it's church service, and then by the, by the, by the evening part, that thing back on the boogaloo, and the Teddy Pendergrass and Luther Vandross, y'all know what I'm talking about? That was one of them stations, right? But this song he used to sing was, I'm, uh, uh, he used to love was, I'm climbing up on the rough side of the mountain. Mm -hmm. So I'm climbing up, y'all know it, on the rough side. Nice song, on the mountain, I'm doing my best, man. You know, it's one of them songs where, like, you're struggling and you're on the daggone, you know, you're, you got your mountain climbing boots on, you got your mountain climbing pick in your hand, and boy, the other side of the mountain, the road, you climbing up that mountain. Well, God never told us to climb the mountains in the scripture. He told us to speak to the mountains. You know, it's like, it's like we, 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 you know, it's like some of you, right, check this out. When a storm happens in our community, you know what we do? We pray. Uh, against the storm. He didn't tell you to pray against the storm. He told you to speak against the storm. And so some of you use the wrong principles for the wrong things. You know, he tells you in times in the Bible when to pray. He does. And so some of us use the wrong things for the wrong scenario. That's why storms sometimes aggressively get us because we fall in the name of Jesus. No, you rebuke that storm. Storm, we rebuke in the name of Jesus. Whatever the storm name is, you stand up like Jesus did and rebuke it with your words. You don't pray against the storm. You speak against the storm. And you don't climb a rough side, you don't climb a mountain, you speak against the mountain. Oh, Lord. And so you got to know what to use, when to use it. So here's my point. If, if, if a person goes into their secret time, they memorizing a prayer that don't have no word base ain't doing you no good, buddy. I'm just saying. Hit the share button, everybody. I'm almost finished. I ain't trying to bore you, but I'm trying to get you to understand. You got to talk to God, and you got to pray the prayer. You got to pray scripture reference. You have to pray the word of God. 
if you're going to get results, people, you have to pray what? The word of God. Amen. You have to pray the word. You have to understand about when you're learning the Father, right? If you learn about Jesus in the scripture, you learn about the Father, God, and you're praying to him, you got to understand what the Father does in a family. He is a protector, boy. He provides food, shelter, health, emotional stability, and financial. He teaches us. Come on. He gives us guidance. He disciplines us. Come on now. Amen? God is all these things and much, much more. He's the best father that anyone could ever have. He's more than the dad who comes to every game. He's more than the dad who never forgets the, the birthdays or birthdays or Christmas or any other opportunity to bless his children. He's more than the dad who brings home the paycheck every week without fail. He's the dad who's bigger and stronger and smarter than any dad on the block. He's the Alpha Omega. He is the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. He is the, and, and, and mentioned, uh, as, at the mention of his name, every knee was gonna, is going to bow and every tongue going to confess. He is Almighty God. This is the person that you're talking to now. You got it? No one can love us like he can. No one can watch over us like he does. No one provides for us like he does. Glory to God. He created everything that walks. He created the, the flies, the, 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 everything that creeps, everything that swims, everything that, that, that lurks. He blew the breath of life into Adam and Adam's nostril and gave life to human race. He's the one who called down the fire and brimstone unto Sodom and Gomorrah. He's the, the one who feeds children of Israel manna and quail out of the air. He's the one uh, that raised the dead uh, and opened blind eyes. He, he's the one, when you read your Bible, he's an amazing God. And he shows you, and when you're praying to this God, he just wants you to bring him his word back so that he can perform miracles in your life. He wants to give you this track record of who he is so that you won't be disappointed while you're praying. He wants to show you his, his amazing uh, 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 history of, of, of just a resume of how he showed up for our ancestors of old and he's showing up for our, hey, come on, our current uh, 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 people of, of, of our day. Amen. Uh, he's showing you that I'll never leave you. Come on, I'll never forsake you. He's moving, he's moving away from uh, any, 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 I want to put it like this. The, Isaiah called him the, the everlasting father. So he's not moving away anytime soon, praise God. He's not going to abandon you. He's not going to only, he's not, uh, going to sh only show up on a certain day of the week for you. He's not going to uh, be there today but not tomorrow. He's the everlasting father. I'm going to be there when you're thinking about me, and I'm going to be here when you ain't thinking about me. But I just need you to pray to me and, and, and talk to me so I can get involved with your earthly affairs. I, I, I want my angels to move for you every day when you begin to stop and pray to me every day. I want you to know that I got your back every day. And the way this thing is set up, people, God, because prayer is the language of the believer, right? It's set up like this. God says, I cannot come down here and get involved with your earthly affairs if you don't talk to me. And the, only, the only way I have permission into your life is by, uh, by you allowing me to come through what we call the vehicle of prayer. I want to come down and be a part of your children's football game, basketball game. I want to come and be in that operating room. I want to be before they get to the operating room. I want to heal their bodies when the doctors have given up. In some cases, some of us got stuff we're dealing with, with our children, with our own personal bodies. I want to be there when everybody's turned their back on me. I want to be there when you're going through a situation and you don't quite know what to do. I want to be there on every side. Come on, where, where you just understand, Lord, I don't know who to talk to, where to go to, who to turn to. I want to be that person right there by your side. I said, daughter, I'm here. Son, I got your back. I want to be there when you're getting a little lonely at night. Come on. And if some of you desire wives or husbands or, or relationship, I want you to know that you might be alone, but you're never lonely. Glory to God. I'm going to always be with you even to the end of time. I want to be with you when you may have that last meal that you just fed your child that day and you do not want, like, want to know what we're going to be at tomorrow. And tomorrow he already got a plan to fill all the cabinets. That's the daddy and the father we're talking about. I want him to say, if for some of y'all, that he says he's going to blow your mind and make you wealthy, and he's going to pull it off. And nobody going to be able to take the blame, or excuse me, nobody going to be able to take the credit but him. I, this is the Father God that we're talking about. That he said, I need you to take out time every day and talk to me. I'm the most important person in your life. 
I'm the one who's going to look out for you when everybody else, if everybody else walk away and turn their back on you. I'll be a mother to you when you're motherless. I'll be a father to you when you're fatherless. I'll be a friend when you're friendless. Glory to God. This is the God that he's, this is the God that I'm talking about, our, our heavenly father, our, the, the father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Why we need to take time out and talk to him. The most powerful person on the planet. We cannot afford not to talk to him every day. Come on, everybody. We can't afford to act like this some casual, uh, uh, nonchalant, you know what I mean? Uh, que sera, sera, whatever it will be, whatever it will be. No, we got to talk to him every day. He, he, he is more important than everybody, anything, and, 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 and every person, you know what I mean? So we have to take time every day of our daggone lives to make this a priority unapologetically. Come on, everybody, hit the share button. This is, is a relationship we can't play with. This we can't, we can't brush, we can't, we can't just, we, no, we, this got to happen every day in 2022. We're going to make a commitment for it to happen every day. It's not that deep. Bishop, I don't know how to pray. I told you they got, we got books, praise God, uh, some bring other books. We have so many books. There's so many books on the market. Amen. Amen. He went to the cross of Calvary. Come on, y'all. He paid the ultimate price for you and I. I mean, there's books. There's this book. One matter of fact, this book, we are actually praying out of this book right now. Prayers that activate blessings by Mr. Apostle John Eckhart. This is one of them, right? And uh, and this is another one by him as well. Uh, prayers that break curses by another. Again, you know, this brother here is amazing. God has used him very, very mightily. Uh, but, you know, again, these are just prayers. We're not on this book, but these are amazing prayers. There's another one by him, same. Uh, prayers that release heaven on earth. Praise God. You see, I uh, pretty much like my brother. But, yeah, this is a good book right there. There's another prayers that root demons. Amen. That route demons. Amen. I'm telling you, you, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't have a prayerless life. Uh, prayers that bring change. This is what one of our sisters that went to uh, Bible college with, uh, Kimberly Daniels. Uh, Apostle Kimberly Daniels right there in Jacksonville, Florida. She's also on the, uh, was the town councilwoman. I, she's now uh, seated in the ho uh, House of Representatives. So she's doing some amazing things. Uh, there's another book, again, by Mr. Eckhart, Prayers That Bring Healing. All right? I mean, people, there's so many. I mean, you got to think about what your scenario is and what you need God to do for your life. Wonderful, powerful prayers. All right? This is another good one here, a classic. It's a, it's, a, it's a prayer book called Pray for Our Church. Amen? Uh, this book here is out of a Harrison house. It's a classic, but it's got things in there about the church specifically. I mean, a real good prayer book. We prayed some of these things last year, uh, but a good prayer book. Again, pray for our church. How you need to pray for your pastor, you need to pray for your elders, your deacons, ministers, sound ministry, media ministry, usher ministry, parking lot ministry. I mean, you know, like stuff, praying for the youth, praying for the greeters, praying for the music ministry, all those who help, praying for the fivefold ministry, the ministers of music, youth leaders, children's ministry, counselors, leadership, church growth come on all that tape ministry cd ministry all that need to be covered in prayer praise god that's what i'm talking about uh another good book here is uh praying for fasting and praying for deliverance by uh, john eckhart all right good stuff i mean this really really good stuff again uh this whole tool bag here right this is a bag that that i've used the lord gave me this years ago and we literally put these prayers in a in a in a, a tool a tool bag all right and these are our tools that we use when we pray. Praise God. This book called here, 100 Questions, 100 Answers to Questions About Prayer, right? So, I mean, just, there's no reason, child of God, uh, that, that we shouldn't be people of prayer, all right? Uh, I mean, there's no reason at all why we should be prayerless, uh, have a, a pray, be a prayerless people. Uh, we have to talk to God. Talking to God, again, uh, it, it, we can't do it casually because I believe, or take this thing casual because we'll become a casualty in the kingdom, amen? And, and, and God knows that we, we need to always take out time to talk to our Heavenly Father. So again, these are books. Uh, like I said, my classic one is A Prayer That Availeth Much book. You need to get that one in your library. If you don't have none of the other ones, definitely get this. Come on, uh, uh, my son. Get this book into your library. Critical, right? So let's look, y'all. Hey, look, I'm out of time. Uh, my time has gotten away from me. Look, the most important thing, I want you to remember this. Again, uh, w w these topics will not be exhausted because I got to get on the new one next week. So look, uh, I pray that you got something out of that. Uh, I was trying not to be too deep with this lesson, keeping it very surface. But look, the main thing you need to know in point number three, hey, we got to pray that word. We got to pray that word. We have to pray that word. Amen. Daily. Amen. It's the will of God for you to pray the word of God. All right. Look, his bow, eyes closed, believers praying. 
but we never want to leave our broadcast without giving people the opportunity to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I know somebody said, Bishop, it's time. Time is gone. My time is up, y'all. Praise God. I mean, you know, I was trying to give it to you, but it's so much Google it, prayers. Uh, what, we, we've done studies on it, y'all. We've done extensive studies on prayer. Of course, you know, I'm not giving you all the breakdown of what types of prayer. I can't do all that. I just want to let you know we have to pray the word of God daily. Amen? All right. So bow your heads right there uh, while you're looking on through your technical device. And let's make sure that we're all connected in a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, repeat this prayer with me. Say, Dear God in heaven, I thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. I realize that I'm in need of a Savior. So, Father, I repent of my sins right now, one by one, all of them. I turn my back on sin. I repent of all my sins. You said in your word, Romans 10 and 9, that if I would confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead, that I would be saved. I receive the Lord Jesus Christ into my heart as my personal Lord and Savior. I thank you, Father, that I am saved. I'm a part of your kingdom and a part of your system today. I thank you again for my newfound relationship in the Lord Jesus Christ right now. In Jesus' name, Come on, shout everybody. Amen, amen. Thank God for those that said that prayer. Man, welcome, sir. Man, welcome to the kingdom of God. The most important kingdom, yes, the most important relationship that you can have is one with the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hey, look, again, thank you again for tuning in. I know, I hope that you've enjoyed it. Please continue to share this video. Uh, we're going to be on a topic every week. We've got 22 things to show to share with you. So that was number point three. And uh, next week, there'll be a new point. So again, I, I'm not exhausting the topic. Just giving you just the base, trying to give you enough scripture reference. But there's so much uh, talk and prayers on the uh, talk about uh, prayer, man. So much stuff, right? I mean, I want to give you the scripture about Jer Jeremiah 1 and 3. You know what I mean? This uh, is powerful stuff. But anyway, look, we, we have so much stuff to share with you. And again, I can't give it all to you in one setting. But again, just understand that it is the will of God for you to be a person of prayer and to step in every day and say your prayer. Again, we love you at heart to heart. Continue to do what God has called you to do. Be tuned in. Hey, y'all, look, we have something special on Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday's not going to be a throwback. Tuesday's not going to be a, 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 a running back. I'm going to live. I'm going to be live Tuesday. Praise God. Uh, probably from my home, wherever I'm be broadcasting from. But I will be live on live Tuesday. So tune in because we're going to have some. We're going to have a juicy topic. Can you pray? Uh, not, not to pray. We're going to have a juicy topic. So I want you to pray. Amen. We have a juicy topic. We're going to start that on Tuesdays, uh, some live stuff. So I'll be next Tuesday live. Glory to God. Excited to come before your homes and to bless you with the word of God. I love you here at Heart to Heart. We love you. We appreciate you. Remember these words from Acts chapter 17 and verse number 28. For in him we live and move and have our being. And by the way, it's all about him.